This video is about vertigo, and specifically a very common form of vertigo called benign paroxysmal positional vertigo, or BPPV for short. Now first off, what is vertigo? It's basically that sensation of either your environment or you within that environment spinning and moving. And there's a real easy explanation as to why it happens. And in order to understand that, we need to think of the inner ear. Now there's a small organ in there called the vestibular labyrinth. And attached to it are three loop-like structures called the semicircular canals. Now within these canals, there's fluid and very fine hair-like sensory organs. There's also smaller organs within uh, the inner ear called the otolith organs. And those have a layer of, of small crystals on them that are very sensitive to gravity. So if you combine all those organs within the inner ear, they basically help tell you what position your head is in rotation or up and down, forward and back. Now sometimes, for many reasons, some of those small crystal-like structures can dislodge and they migrate into the canal and start to irritate those hair-like sensory organs. And that's what causes that sensation of the room spinning or you spinning within it, even though you're not moving. So when a patient comes to the clinic and complains of vertigo, one of the tests we do to identify what type it is is called the Dix Hall Pipe Maneuver. And in order to demonstrate, we've got Ritzy here today, and she's gonna help out. So now I'm gonna show you what the Dix Hall Pipe Maneuver is like. Okay, Ritzy, let's have you move your legs over this way. And before we get started, one thing to note is that when performing this test, the patient can become nauseous or, or dizzy. And if the symptoms are severe enough, uh, you'd probably wanna have one of the garbage bins or a bucket close to the table just in case they vomit, because that can happen sometimes. So starting out, you're gonna turn your head to 45 degrees. Perfect. And I'm gonna put my hand here so you know where you are. And you're gonna lie straight back. I'm gonna guide you. Okay, perfect. And the key here is to make sure the head is rotated 45 degrees and the neck is extended about 30 degrees. Now what we're looking for are specific involuntary eye movements, almost like a twitch-like movement known as nystagmus. And there's three types. And Ritzy here is gonna help us out. These are really hard to fake. So we're gonna do our best to try to recreate these movements. So first one is called a rotational nystagmus or a torsional nystagmus. And that's a rotational movement. So let's see if Ritzy can try to mimic that. So you can try to do, it's almost like a half circle where the eyes come back to center. And they would be quick, rapid movements. So like I said, it's, it's hard to fake this, but this is something like what it would look like. Okay. Are you dizzy? No. no? Okay, good. <laughs> Let me know if you get dizzy because I don't want you to do it. Now the second one would be a side to side or horizontal nystagmus. So that one goes from center out to one side and then back to center again. And it's just a rapid, quick movement. Yeah, it's pretty good. It's hard to fake, but no, Ritzy's doing her best. Okay, and then the last one is an up and down or vertical nystagmus. Okay, good. Doing okay? Mm -hmm. Okay, now once you've done one side, you're gonna bring the patient back up. So you're gonna come back up slowly here. Let me help you up. Okay, and then let them kind of get their bearings and then we're gonna turn the head to the opposite side, 45 degrees. And once again, same idea. So you're going to lie straight back and then be there to guide your patient. And yep, yeah, make sure the neck's extended 30 degrees. And once again, we're trying to observe and see if we see those involuntary eye twitches known as nystagmus. There's Ritzy doing her best once again. So that would be a rotational. And then try side to side. Yeah. That'd be horizontal. Okay, and then try up and down. There you go. Okay, doing okay? Mm-hmm, thank you. All right, welcome. Okay, so now we'll have you sit back up slowly. And you can come back here. Perfect, and then just swing your legs around back that way. Okay, so based on the type of nystagmus that we see uh, when we're trying to make the diagnosis for BPPV, we're gonna provide you with specific exercises that will address that specific type of nystagmus. So basically, if we have the rotational or torsional nystagmus, that's affecting the posterior canal, and we would call that a posterior canal BPPV, and we would prescribe the Epley's maneuver for that. 
The second type, the horizontal or side-to-side -side nystagmus, would be affecting the lateral canal. So that would be a lateral canal BPPV. For that, we would prescribe the Lempert maneuver. And the last one, the up and down or vertical nystagmus, affects the superior canal. And that would be a superior canal BPPV. And for that, we would prescribe the deep head hanging maneuver. So depending on your symptoms and depending on the diagnosis that we would make, uh, we would direct you to those specific videos. So if you'd like more information and you'd like to see videos on those specific maneuvers, please check out our videos on the Epley's Maneuver, the Lempert Maneuver, and the Deep Head Hanging Maneuver.